What's up creators, this is Tom, welcome back to another video. So it's been a little while, a bit too long in my opinion, since we've sat down, chilled out and chatted about cameras. Or more specifically about one camera because Blackmagic has just released their brand new Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K Pro. Wow, that is a mouthful of a camera name. So to set the scene just a little bit, uh, my name is Tom, if you don't know me, I am a videographer, I create videos full time for clients. I also make these YouTube videos about uh, photography, filmmaking, videography, I use that term filmmaking lightly because I don't produce films. You know, I'm not uh, making short films. I just shoot a whole bunch of content uh, and I do that for a living. So in terms of the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera line, I shot with the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K for about a year. I ended up making quite a lot of money out of that camera. It was a fantastic tool for uh, my career. When I started to go freelance, it was basically the perfect camera for uh, what I was doing at the time. But I ended up selling it because it just didn't fit my needs in the end, what I was uh, shooting with it. And it had, did really have some sort of quite big hindrances. It just meant it really wasn't right for me and my workflow in the end. Uh, so I decided to move on uh, and get rid of it. So in this video, what I wanna do is talk about what's new with the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K Pro, what they've actually done, what changes they've made, but more specifically, why I won't be upgrading to this camera, why I'm even not thinking about changing from my current setup, which is actually a Canon C200 that we will come on to talk about near the end of the video, because I just don't really feel like they've solved any of my main issues uh, that I had whilst using the Pocket. First of all, before we go any further, a few disclaimers. This camera, the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K Pro is going to be incredible. It is going to be an unbelievable camera for certain people. They will absolutely swear by it. They will revolutionize their filmmaking. I still think it is probably going to be the best bang for buck picture, like the best picture uh, in terms of features and functionality uh, and just raw picture that you can get out of a camera for $2,500. This camera is not going to be right for me. This is all just my opinion. Blackmagic fans, please don't absolutely rip me in the comments. First of all, let's talk about what is new from the 6K Pro, from the 6K and the uh, and the 4K. So most notably, it is the built-in NDs. That is the feature which most people are most excited about. Uh, it is a fantastic inclusion. It really is a, a step up in terms of, you know, going from a sort of a prosumery level camera to a really professional camera. Built-in NDs are absolutely essential for a more advanced filmmaking because you don't want to be screwing on these uh, really, you know, these fairly flimsy, uh, often not amazing quality lens filters onto uh, your camera lenses that are inevitably very expensive. Like you're just putting a piece of glass in front of it, you're not getting the most out of your camera lens. Built-in NDs generally are incredibly clean, incredibly high quality and built for that camera. Next up is the little flippy screen. This is a really big deal on uh, the Pocket 6K Pro because um, generally the way these cameras are rigged out is I actually had a camera rig system on my 4K where it would have been amazing to have a little flippy screen because uh, the, the sort of handle and the top down handle meant that I always had to have a monitor because I like to do a lot of low angle filmmaking and having a the, the screen built in uh, and flippable like the screen is one of the best features on uh, the pocket 4k like it's a beautiful five inch display and the fact that this is now flippable and extra bright is a really really good feature they've also upgraded and changed the battery it should mean that you get an extra bit of battery life we're going to talk about this a bit a bit more detail but they've switched over from the Canon LPE6 batteries to uh, Sony MPF batteries. So that's a positive change by the sounds of it. But again, we will talk about that in a bit. There are a few more changes, most notably like uh, there's an EVF, which you can buy uh, and plug in if you want to use that. Um, the good thing about this is that it is just a paid upgrade. Like if you don't want to use it, you don't need to buy it. And um, so not really much more to say on that. But now I want to go into briefly talking about uh, my issues with the original 4K when I used that, that would have definitely been transferable for talking about the 6K as well, even though I never owned that camera. But before we do that, I wanna talk about Skillshare. Like in my last video, this is not a paid sponsored segment, but by not doing it as a sponsored segment, it genuinely allows me to talk about 
products and services that I genuinely use and genuinely love. Personally, I've been scratching up on my lighting skills and I've thoroughly been enjoying this in-depth course by cinematographer Zach Mulligan. If you're interested in improving your cinematic lighting skills and into shape and control light, I thoroughly recommend this course. So if you're interested in that course or a course about pretty much anything online, there is a link in the description. You can literally sign up for a two week free trial, no strings attached. And if you do do that, that goes towards supporting the channel. So thank you. So let's talk about my original issues with the 4K. And uh, these are obviously transferable to the 6K and why I kind of feel like Blackmagic haven't necessarily hit the mark in terms of solving these issues for me, which is the main reason why I'm not interested actually in upgrading to this camera. First and foremost is the battery life. Anyone who has owned the 4K, the 6K knows that the battery life on these cameras is absolutely abysmal. They use these Canon LP6 batteries, fairly inexpensive. So that's fine. You know, you can really stock up on them if you want. Uh, but the actual batteries themselves are not bad. Like I use those batteries on my Canon EOS R, uh, this camera right here. And uh, you know, that lasts for like four, like three, four hours easy with one of those batteries. Uh, and the Pocket 4 goes to tear through them in genuinely about 20 minutes. And the thing with the Sony MPF batteries, the new Sony MPF batteries that from real world usage because I think of the uh, increased screen brightness on the Pocket 4K, the real world usage on uh, the battery life is really not going to be a significant, significant improvement. It might be a lot better. You know, you might go from 25 minutes to 40 minutes, but that's still not really enough in terms of, you know, I'm not going to bring around nine batteries with me to just cover off a day of shooting. So in my opinion, that is one sort of significant drawback about the Pocket 4K. Still, you sort of really have to have a camera rig with a massive uh, battery attached. And like I said, sometimes you just want to run a gun, pick up a camera and start shooting. Next is the fact that you have to rig these cameras. Like they're on their own. They're not going to be a, a really a sufficient video camera just on its own with no surrounding camera rig, like they're a bit light. I know that the 6K Pro is gonna be a little bit heavier than uh, the Pocket 4K and the Pocket 6K, but I still think that will stand true. For this, to get the most out of these cameras, do you wanna rig it? And again, that comes back to the sometimes, I just need to pick up a camera, maybe I wanna run it on a gimbal, and uh, you know, I just want it to be easy, quick, and just run nice and fast. And then the next I'm probably gonna get a bit of hate for in uh, the comments section, but, and this is the fact that the camera still just doesn't come with any autofocus. None of us were really expecting Blackmagic to put in autofocus into uh, the upgrade from the Pocket 4K, 6K, because really not a lot of people have a ton of complaints about it, but really after using sort of commercial mirrorless cameras, um, I can't undervalue uh, having autofocus. Like it is just so useful to have good, accurate autofocus on a camera. Like I can shoot an interview and never have to pretty much worry about keeping a face in focus. I have been spoiled using Sony and Canon's autofocusing systems and sometimes the stuff, the type of things that I shoot just lends itself to needing autofocus. So again, I do think a lot of this comes back to uh, sort of filmmaking versus content creation. And I definitely identify in the sort of content creation uh, and videography niche. I create videos for clients. I'm not shooting short films. And I think these cameras, these pocket cameras are more suited to creating fantastic uh, images over creating content and being really efficient doing so. So in terms of the camera that I'm actually using to shoot this, this is the camera that I've been using for the past few months. I've sort of teased it a bit on the here on the channel and not really talked about it all that much, but it is the Canon C200. I managed to pick this up for around about uh, three and a half thousand pounds here in the UK, so used. So a bit more expensive than the Pocket 6K Pro, but it really does have a few more powerful features. So, so most notably is the battery life. I can run this camera for three hours on one of the normal batteries, and then six hours if I use one of the larger battery sizes. Uh, so I would just need two batteries to basically give me as much unlimited battery life as I wanted. I also don't have to worry about rigging it out all the time, though I can obviously rig it out and increase the rig size, but it's heavy enough just to create fantastic handheld footage right out the bat. And it's got amazing autofocus, you know, like I don't have to worry too much about being out of focus in uh, my shot because the autofocusing system on the C200 is amazing and it's just tracking my face the entire time. It also shoots absolutely beautiful 12-bit RAW. Um, I've actually not had a chance to play around with this yet because I haven't invested any CFast cards, but I will do shortly. But like, like this is 8-bit, like this is the best 8-bit I've ever worked with. 
Um, it's absolutely beautiful footage, even just in like, you know, 4K 8-bit. So absolutely fantastic. I'm absolutely loving this camera. And uh, yeah, this is one of the reasons that I'm not interested in upgrading to the 6K Pro, even though I am gonna try and get hold of one to create some videos here on the channel. I do wanna create some rig systems uh, for the 6K Pro because I, I absolutely love building camera rigs, even if that's a bit counterproductive to saying that I didn't enjoy having to use them all the time, but hopefully you guys can see my opinion and my point of view on that. There we go guys, that kind of sums this video up really. Like I just wanted to sit down, nerd out about cameras for a little while. Uh, and I'm gonna be doing that in the comments section down below as well. Maybe you are thinking of picking up the uh, Pocket 6K Pro. If you are, let me know definitely down below in the comments. I'd be super curious to know uh, if you're gonna be getting one. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you guys next time.